Bang. Click. Pfft. In front of everyone's eyes, Jason stepped heavily on Calfield's chest. This kick was completely different from the previous ones. Everyone a creepy sound was heard, and Calfield's entire chest collapsed instantly. UUI Calfield, who was lying there, shook violently and his eyes widened in vain, revealing an incredible light. On top of his chest, Jason's right foot had completely sunk into his chest, instantly trampling his entire internal organs into a puddle of flesh. Kelfield never imagined that from facing the fear of death, to the pleasure and joy of surviving the disaster, to the longing for revenge, Kelfield even planned in his heart how he would torture Jason. But he didn't expect that he would die here in the end. Kelfied, do you feel unbelievable? I'm sorry, I never planned to let you go from the beginning. Looking at Kelfield lying there and staring at him in disbelief, Jason said calmly. Said the voice. You Kelfield stared blankly at Jason, who was walking away. The power originally contained in his body suddenly disappeared in the next moment. A trace of blood spilled from the corner of his mouth, Kelfield's eyes widened and he refused to rest in silence. At the moment of death, what he hated the most was not that Jason killed him, but that Jason had no intention of letting him go, but he still did this, which gave him hope of living, and even he thought about the means of revenge, but in the end he died here. Kelfied. Not far away, Eastman suddenly let out an angry roar. He stared blankly at Kelfield's body lying there. Until now, he still couldn't believe it in his heart. Jason actually killed Kelpid, who was the son of the Batad patriarch of the Radigan family. Well, all the soldiers from the public security station who were present suddenly took a step back. Knowing Kelfield's identity, they all immediately looked at the man standing there, his boots stained with blood. Jason's eyes were like looking at a monster. The most frightened of all people at this moment was Chloe, who was also lying next to Kelfield. At this moment, Chloe's heart was full of fear and regret. Since the other party dared to kill Kelpid, it was obvious that he would not be taken seriously by them. Just to show his face in the family and to show his existence, he brought such a evil star with him. Come back and end up like this. If I had known this, I would never have brought back the man named Jason. Chloe felt extremely remorseful, and pain and despair spread in his heart, but there was no medicine for regret in this world, and everyone should pay the price for what he had done. Haha, <laughs> not bad. Different from the anger and fear of Eastman and others, Renault looked at his son with satisfaction. Originally, he thought that Jason was immature and soft-hearted and wanted to let Kelfi go. Virtue, but I didn't expect it to happen like this. Renault naturally knew what the consequences of killing Kelfield would be. It would most likely bring about a complete conflict between the Todd family and the Radigan family, the two most powerful families in the kingdom. However, Renault didn't care at all in his heart. If someone dares to hurt his son, no matter who he is, he will never let him go. Jason, what should we do with this guy? Renault asked, looking at Chloe on the ground. Chloe's eyelids twitched and she raised her head. From Renault's eyes, he saw the cold murderous intent. Chloe had no doubt that as soon as Jason opened his mouth, the middle-aged man would kill her instantly without hesitation kill without showing any mercy. Chloe, who works at the security station and is a member of the Radigan family in the royal city, has looked at others like this countless times in the execution room of the security station, holding the power of life and death for others. But now, his life is the same. It's in the hands of others, it's fate. Him? Father, you've already disabled one of his legs, that's enough. Jason said casually, without even looking at Chloe lying on the ground. Okay, Jason, let's go. Renault looked at everyone present coldly, and then walked outside the police station with Jason and Wayne. Looking at the backs of Renault and others, Chloe, who had escaped after the robbery, did not feel the slightest joy in her heart. Although the other party did not kill her, Jason was brought back by herself. Now that Kelfield is dead, she is furious. In addition to settling accounts with Jason, 
the family and the family may not be able to escape the punishment of the family. Stop. Eastman held a sharp sword and stopped in front of Renault and the others. With extremely angry eyes, he shouted at the men behind him, Stop them. Is this someone that Master Calfield dares to kill? Soldiers, look at me, and I look at you. There is fear in your eyes. Although you are afraid in your heart, you don't dare to disobey Eastman's order. Each one of them is strong and courageous. The people gathered around. Seeking death. Looking at the densely packed soldiers trying to surround him, Renault snorted coldly, and his body suddenly flashed and he was in front of Eastman in an instant. Eastman was startled. Just as he was about to make a move with his hand, a strong wind struck him on the left side of his face like lightning. Just hearing the sound of Pa, Eastman, a fifth-level senior sect spiritual master, was thrown heavily into the air at the next moment. His body hit the wall of the corridor beside him and fell to the ground. The force was so powerful that cracks were created on the wall made of green bricks. You Eastman stood up with difficulty, feeling mixed with shame and anger. He wanted to speak, but a mouthful of blood spurted out from his mouth. His whole body collapsed on the ground, his mind was buzzing, and he was confused. On the left side of his face, a heavy blood-red palm print appeared, which looked particularly dazzling. You you, don't come over, we won't be polite if you come over again. The soldiers held long swords and looked nervously at Renault, who was slowly approaching. They shouted loudly, but their trembling hands and frightened eyes, all of them revealed the fear in their hearts and there was no trace of the usual domineering appearance in the royal city. Get out of here, otherwise you won't blame me for being rude. Renault's eyes quietly passed over everyone's faces, and he spoke lightly as he swallowed spiritual power in his palms. The soldiers looked at each other, and they didn't know who took the lead to get out of the way. For a moment, all the soldiers retreated to both sides and made way for a path in the middle of the corridor. Renault walked in the front, followed closely by Jason and Wayne. The three of them walked out as if no one else was around. However, the hundreds of soldiers from the public security station watched Renault and the others carefully, not daring to move at will. Huh, after Renault and the others walked out, no one in the crowd let out a long breath. Many people came back to their senses, and most people's backs were already wet. When Jason and the others left through the crowd, a rather tough-looking police officer was called over by Count Eastman, who had recovered from his nerves. After a few words of instruction, the man nodded and quickly he walked out of the back door of the Royal City Police Station and ran quickly towards the Radigan family's mansion in the Royal City. After coming out of the corridor of the interrogation room of the police station, the first thing Jason did was to go to the place where the assassin who was also brought back was receiving treatment. What do you guys do? This is a security center. You must go through formalities before entering. As soon as Jason and the others arrived at the door of the treatment room, they were stopped by two soldiers guarding them. Although Director Eastman took away almost all the soldiers in the security station in order to intercept Renault, there were still soldiers guarding some important positions. Ignoring the shouts of the guards guarding the gate, Renault took action instantly, and a phantom quickly passed through the air. With two bangs, the two soldiers were knocked unconscious in the next moment. Unlike Wayne, who only had a gap in his chest, the fourth-level Heavenly Spirit Master's entire sternum was almost completely shattered by Jason's punch, and his internal organs were also ruptured. Therefore, even though he had received medical attention from the police station doctor, despite the treatment, the assassin was still unconscious and did not wake up. Renault carried the assassin on his shoulders and walked out of the treatment room. Just when Jason and the others had just walked out of the door, there were sounds of rapid footsteps in the distance, and a large group of armored guards were approaching. They came here quickly, and the leader was none other than Leo, the patriarch of the Todd family. Second brother, Jason, are you okay? Leo immediately shouted from a distance when he saw Renault. Brother, we are fine. Renault smiled. You said you were fine, Jason, how did you end up like this? How are your injuries? Come on, show me to your uncle. 
At this moment, Jason was being carried on Wayne's back, looking extremely embarrassed. Seeing Jason like this, Leo's eyes turned red. In fact, when Jason was brought into the police station, almost all of his injuries had healed under the treatment of the strange power. The only injury on his body at this moment was that he was injured by Kelfi when he was in the police station. Those few kicks from Da. However, no matter how ruthless Kelfield is, he is only a third-level senior spiritual master. Therefore, although Jason is in a mess at this moment, there is actually not much serious problem. The reason why Jason lies on Wayne's back and pretends to be he looked seriously injured, but there was another reason. Uncle, I'm fine. Jason raised his head and said to Leo. You said it was okay. Look at how you look now. Quickly, bring Jason back to the family for treatment. Leo's face looked extremely angry and he shouted at the family guard behind him. Especially after seeing the extremely tattered clothes and blood stained Jason's body, Leo felt extremely angry for Jason's previous experience. Huh, Jason, what's going on? How did I hear that you were assassinated and were brought back by people from this security station? This security station is just playing the piano randomly. Tell your uncle, uncle will definitely I want to seek justice for you. Leo's face looked extremely gloomy at this moment. The director of the public security station must be Eastman. I want to ask Eastman why he gave away members of my Todd family. Catch him in. Leo led the family's guards and was about to walk into the police station angrily, but was stopped by Renault. Forget it, brother, I have solved the matter. There is nothing wrong there. Renault shook his head and said, Everyone who dared to hurt Jason has received the lesson he deserves. The one who taught Jason a lesson in the police station, since Kelfield has also been killed by Jason. Let's go back now. After all, Jason's injuries are more important. Leo nodded. The top priority is to have someone treat Jason's injuries. As for going to the Radigan family to find an explanation, we should wait until Jason is sent back to the family for treatment. Thinking of this, Leo said casually, This well, I will kill Calfield if he dares to teach Jason a lesson in the police station. We, the Todd family, are the ones who can casually wa what? Kelphid, was killed by you? Which Kelphid? Suddenly, Leo seemed to have thought of something and looked at Renault with a shocked face. That's Kelfield of the Radigan family. I heard he is the son of Patriarch Bastard of the Radigan family. Second brother, you are too tough. Leo smiled bitterly and shook his head. He never thought that in such a short period of time before, Renault and the others actually killed Kelfield, the eldest son of the Radigan family in the police station. Now, it would be strange for the Radigan family not to fight hard. The entire, there will definitely be a bloody storm in the royal city. However, the Radigan family has become more and more arrogant recently. In this case, it is better to take a preemptive strike. Since the incident 18 years ago, our Todd family has been silent for too long. It is time for the kingdom to everyone knows who is the number one martial arts family in the kingdom. All family members obey orders. Thinking of this, Leo's eyes flashed with a sharp light, he raised the family patriarch's token high in his hand, and shouted at the family guards behind him who had rushed to rescue Jason. Voice. Here. The Radigan family is lawless. In broad daylight, they colluded with assassins and openly assassinated members of my Todd family. Everyone obeyed my order and immediately mobilized all the family's forces in the royal city to attack the Radigan family is asking for an explanation. Carls. Here. You take my command talisman out of the city immediately, and let Bardolf, who is stationed outside the city to guard the royal city, lead his mad lion army to guard the four gates of the royal city. You must not let an assassin go. Yes. Lori. Here. Immediately send me an order to have Abel lead all the city guards to assist in the martial law in the royal city and search for suspects. Yes. Radford. Here. You immediately lead a team of guards to escort Jason and the others back to the family, 
and inform Uncle Rossiter of the matter. Yes. The rest of the people come with me, to the Radigan family Leo shouted loudly, and everyone present suddenly agreed. Brother, this Radigan family, I will go with you. Renault came to Leo and spoke calmly. Leo glanced at Renault, with a smile on his face, and his two big hands struck together heavily. Uncle is indeed the head of the family. He is courageous and capable. Jason, who was carried over by several guards, glanced at the resolute Leo and couldn't help but sigh in his heart. It's a pity that although there was a reason for what happened, there are still some shortcomings. Thinking of this, Jason immediately called over a guard who was escorting him back. After saying a few words in his ear, he said seriously, you will come right away. Go to the Oliver Auction House in Wanching to find their person in charge, Yen Ji, and ask her to immediately bring the materials I just told you. There must be no mistakes. Did you hear it? Yes, Master Jason. The guard had often heard about Jason's glorious deeds in the family, so he immediately responded without any nonsense, and immediately ran towards the Oliver Auction House. You guys, you don't have to take care of me. You must keep an eye on this person. Jason pointed at the assassin, carried by one of the guards, and ordered. The royal city of Colton, the residence of the Radigan family. Patriarch Bastard of the Radigan family was sitting quietly in his study, silently looking at the documents on the desk. Over the years, under the leadership of Bastard, the Radigan family has gradually developed from a first-class family in the kingdom to the current top family. It is tied with the Todd family and is known as the two most powerful families in the kingdom. Only Bastard himself knows the hardships he endured afterwards. In front of outsiders, the Radigan family seemed extremely prominent, and only Bastard knew that all this was only because of the needs of His Majesty the King. The Todd family, the number one Wushuan family in the kingdom for hundreds of years, was originally too powerful, so His Majesty Leeson supported himself and allowed his family to develop openly and secretly, so as to mutually benefit from each other. Checks and Balances but a month ago, His Royal Highness the Grand Prince of the Kingdom and Master Rudolph went to personally congratulate the Todd family when they held a clan meeting. This news has made Bastard quite worried recently. Ba Tad, who knew the news, immediately sent out his family's forces to inquire about the cause. Only then did he realize that it seemed that a member of the Todd family had cured His Highness the Prince's illness, and then His Highness went there. Special thanks. In the eyes of normal people, it is an extremely ordinary thing for His Royal Highness the Prince to go to thank his savior. However, Bastard, who has been up and down in official circles for a long time, understands that this action of His Royal Highness also represents the kingdom's one attitude is that His Majesty Nexent seems to no longer intend to continue to suppress the Todd family. This news made Batad alert, and at the same time, he ordered people to investigate Jason's information. Since Tallinn City is far away from the royal city, although the Radigan family is powerful, in some aspects, it is not as powerful as a family with a rich heritage like the Todd family. It was not until the past two days that Jason's information was revealed. Put it on the desk of the Batad patriarch. However, Batad was fine not to read this information, but once he looked at it, doubts arose in his heart. According to the investigation information, Jason was actually the son of Renault, who had offended the Daos family of the Cairo Empire. He had just recently returned to the Todd family. What surprised Batad even more was that since he was a child, this Jason had always been his performance was mediocre until last year, when he suddenly rose to prominence in Tallinn City and became friends with Saha, the president of Tallinn City's Elixir Union, and Bisfam, the president of the Sith Spiritual Power Academy. Apart from this, there is nothing special about Jason in the investigation data, but the news from the palace says that Jason is extremely accomplished in elixir science, and even the first elixir master in the kingdom, Lou Master Rudolph, was quite complimentary, otherwise, it would not be possible to cure the condition of His Highness the Prince, which even Master Rudolph and others were helpless to do. Where did this Jason come from? Who taught him all the knowledge about elixirs? 
Batad closed his eyes and pondered, thinking about the strategies that the family would adopt in the future. No matter what, the family's hostility towards the Todd family has to be restrained a little recently. At the same time, the children of the family must be informed not to provoke people from the Todd family at will, especially that Jason. I always feel that this Jason Sen's appearance is too mysterious. Batad frowned and whispered to himself. After a while, Bastard couldn't help but sigh, there is still no one who can carry the cauldron in the family. If our family also has a seventh-level imperial spiritual master, then we have nothing to fear. In this world, there is only absolute force. Only in this way can the family survive forever. Clan leader. Come in. Bastard folded the documents in his hands, and his expression returned to calm. A family guard came in, bowed respectfully, and said, Clan leader, there is a deputy director of the Royal City Public Security Station named Midas waiting outside the door to ask for an audience. He said he has something important to report to the clan leader. The deputy director of the public security station. Director? Batad frowned. The Royal Security Bureau is one of the forces of the family, and the director is Eastman, a member of the family. Generally speaking, Eastman himself comes back to report any important matters. There is no reason to send others. A trace of worry arose in Bastard's heart, let him in. The guard immediately retreated, and then walked in again after a moment. The person who came in with him was a sturdy middle-aged man wearing a costumes unique to the security of the royal city. After bringing the middle-aged man in, the guard retreated sensibly. Are you Midas? If you have anything to say, just say it. Bastard said calmly. Such a commander, this morning Midas began to tell the story from the beginning. In front of Bastard, the powerful deputy minister of the kingdom's headquarters, Midas did not dare to say anything. Exaggerations and omissions after only listening to a few sentences, Bastard's face gradually became gloomy as he sat there. He was really afraid of what might happen. In the past two days, he had just prepared to announce to his family that he would not provoke the Todd family at will. However, he didn't expect that before he could give the order, Chloe would capture a member of the Todd family, and it was also Jason. When he heard Midas say that his son Kelfield was also at the police station today, for some reason, Bastard had a vague feeling in his heart. Midas's next words directly confirmed Bastard's thoughts. After hearing Midas say that a middle-aged man from the Todd family broke into the security center and wounded his son Kelfield to the ground, he was also beaten to the ground. After Jason killed him, Bastard was stunned. What? What did you say? Say it again. Batad, who was sitting there peacefully, suddenly stood up, rushed to Midas, and lifted him up, with a look in his eyes. A look of disbelief and a roar. Lord Commander Bastard, Master Kelfield has been killed by Jason, and Director Eastman is also seriously injured. After Midas, a senior heavenly spiritual master, was captured by Bastard, not daring to resist at all, he said with a cry. No impossible Bastard's face was pale and without any trace of blood. As the head of a family, he had two daughters, but only one son. But now others told him that his only son a son has been killed, how can he accept this? My sons, the Todd family, Jason, I will never let you go. Batad threw Namitas to the ground, gritted his teeth, made a sound with hatred, and opened his eyes, there's a hint of madness in it. He originally decided not to provoke the Todd family at will in the future, but now his heart is full of thoughts of revenge, the hatred of taking away his son, the hatred of taking away his son. Here comes someone. Batad shouted angrily, mobilize your troops immediately, I'm going to the Todd family, to find an explanation. Royal City, City Guards Headquarters. What? Then Jason actually killed Kelfield? Abel stood up suddenly and looked at Lori who came to deliver the order, his face full of shock. Yes, Mr. Abel, the Patriarch asked you to immediately lead all the city guards to impose martial law on the royal city. Now the Patriarch has personally gone to the Radigan family. Lori stood aside, his eyes wild. 
The Todd family has been suppressed by the kingdom over the years, and their status in the royal city has been hit repeatedly. The newly rising Radigan family has continued to oppress them. In recent years, they have even claimed that they are the number one martial arts family in the kingdom. However, the family, but there has been no action. As a member of the Todd family, Laurie actually looked down upon a nouveau riche family like the Radigan family in his heart. After holding back his anger, he received a letter from Chief Leo. After the order, my blood was already boiling, and I was ready to have a fight with the Radigan family. He wants to let the bumpkin of the Radigan family and all the nobles in the royal city know who is the real number one martial arts family in the kingdom of Orlando. The Radigan family is not even qualified to carry shoes in front of his own family. Okay, I will immediately mobilize the city guards to enforce martial law throughout the city. You can follow me immediately to support Chief Leo. Abel couldn't help but get excited and at the same time, a hint of joy quietly passed through his eyes. Although Abel was at odds with Leo in the family, Leo was the patriarch after all. If the patriarch ordered, he could put forward opinions if it was in the family council, but now, he had to obey. But for the Radigan family, as a member of the family, he also held back his anger. Eastman from the sheriff's department was his enemy in every aspect of daily affairs. What made him even more excited was that the whole incident led to the fuse turned out to be Jason who killed Bastard's son Kelpid. Once things get big, no matter what the outcome is, Jason, the instigator of the incident, will definitely not get any good results. He is only the executor of the order. Even the Leo clan leader may be punished by the family for his reckless treatment of this matter. Impeachment and losing one of the patriarchs, Abel believed that his father Claude and the others would definitely seize this opportunity. One after another political orders came out of Abel's mouth, and a moment later, groups of fully armed city guard soldiers rushed out from the city guard headquarters with a rumble, and those city guards who were originally on duty in the royal city, they all also received new orders. It is afternoon now, which is the most lively time of the day in the royal city. The luxurious streets in the royal city are full of traffic and pedestrians, bustling and extremely lively. Because the auction held by the Oliver Chamber of Commerce was about to take place, many businessmen came from all over the kingdom, and even some businessmen from other countries were all choosing what they liked in the shops on both sides of the street. While everyone was wandering around leisurely, the sound of footsteps suddenly sounded on the street. Everyone looked around in confusion and saw a group of armored and fully armed city guards marching murderously from the street. A patrol came over from the other end. Everyone, listen, because an assassin broke into the royal city, from now on, the whole city will be under martial law. Everyone must return to their residences immediately. No mistakes. The leading city guard captain shouted loudly while patrolling. Shouted. My dear, could it be that a big shot has been assassinated? It's such a big battle, hurry up and go back. After seeing this situation, the pedestrians on the street were all frightened and ran to their homes, and the vendors on the roadside also quickly pack up the things in front of you and rush home. The royal city is different from ordinary cities. The residents who have lived in the royal city all year round know that if something happens, closing the door is the best way. Nothing will be affected. Otherwise, if it gets serious, it will not only be you. It's a brain-shaking problem. Naturally, such a big move in the royal city cannot be hidden from the eyes of some people. Soon, many prominent people in the entire royal city got the news. City guards? Aren't these the troops of the Todd family? An assassin broke into the royal city? Oh, what is so crazy about the Todd family? After receiving the news, many people were filled with doubts. Soon, another piece of news attracted everyone's attention. The Mad Lion Legion, one of the four directly affiliated legions that had been stationed on the west side of the royal city and guarded the security of the royal city, actually led an army to surround the royal city and blocked the entrance to the royal city. The four city gates are strictly prohibited for pedestrians to enter or exit. This, the Todd family, seems to be rebelling, right? Many people were doubtful, but
but felt something was wrong. At that time, the Todd family was at the height of its power and strength, and its military influence spread across most of the kingdom's legions. After that incident, they were suppressed by the kingdom. At that time, the Todd family did not rebel. Nowadays, the power of the Todd family has shrunk significantly. His Royal Highness the Prince personally visited the Todd family during the clan meeting a month ago. It seems that the kingdom's attitude towards the Todd family has just improved, but to do something like this at this time is not a big deal. Maybe? And if they really want to rebel, they should surround the palace. What is the point of letting the city guards impose martial law on the streets? However, the more surprising news is yet to come. In addition to the Kingdom City Guards, the Royal City Police Station, which is affiliated with the Radigan family, also suddenly made moves. All the soldiers from the public security station urgently gathered at the Radigan family mansion to prepare. Treat. The second division of the guards, stationed in the north of the Royal City and controlled by the Radigan family, was also rushing towards the Royal City. It suddenly became clear in many people's minds. Looking at this posture, these two families were going to stage a family war in the royal city, and they started to fight. But what are these two families doing? Although the Todd family and the Radigan family often have conflicts, they are not on the same page. But looking at the situation now, these two families are going to fight to the death today. I won't stop until I die. What happened to these two families? Did it become like this all of a sudden? Of course, when the respectable guys in the royal city got this information, the current king of the kingdom of Orlando, His Majesty Nessent, who was taking a leisurely walk in the garden, also got this information. Looking at the information in his hand, Leesent, who was originally in a happy mood and with a smile on his face, frowned and his face instantly became extremely gloomy. Who can tell me what is going on? Leesent asked slowly with a calm face. If the Todd family and the Radigan family were going to rebel, Nexent would never believe it, but since these two families had put on such a posture, it was obvious that something big was going on that he didn't know about. I don't know. A group of servants and maids standing nearby knelt down at the same time, with panic on their faces. Check, let me check immediately. I want to know what is going on. Leeson said coldly, also, pass on my decree, let the royal spiritual master group guard the outside of the palace, and the royal guards be on guard. Inside the palace, the palace guards are following me. Yes, I obey the order. As the king of a country, the intelligence agencies in his hands are definitely much more powerful than those of ordinary families. They are spread across every corner of the kingdom, and the national political center, like the royal city, is extremely tightly controlled. Not long after the furious Leeson returned to his study from the garden, a strange black shadow suddenly appeared quietly beside Leeson. Your Majesty, this is the information just passed down from below. A piece of paper quietly landed on the desk in front of Leeson. In fact, the kingdom spies in the royal city had already passed on the intelligence they had obtained without Nexante issuing an order. Leeson picked up the information on the table and looked at it intently. Huh? What? Master Jason was assassinated? Seriously injured? Leeson looked at it for a while, then suddenly frowned, and a glimmer of light flashed across his eyes. The intelligence described the cause of this incident very clearly. Jason, a member of the Todd family, was assassinated and just escaped. However, he was brought back to the police station by Chloe of the Radigan family. But it happened that Barb of the Radigan family Kelfield, the son of the staid patriarch, seemed to have a grudge against Jason, so he tortured and beat Jason. Reno, Jason's father, who arrived in a hurry, was furious and turned the security station upside down. Kelfield was also killed in the police station. The Todd family believed that Jason's assassination was the work of the Radigan family, and the Radigan family became even more furious after Kelfield's death. This led to the two sides mobilizing troops to each other to seek justice. Move. After reading the information, Leeson was extremely angry. 
In stern continent, if a powerful spiritual master is the guardian weapon of a country, then a spiritual pharmacist is definitely a strategic level existence. To measure whether a country is strong, the first thing to look at is not how strong that country's top master is, but what level the country's top elixir master is. A powerful elixir master can definitely make the country's powerful spiritual masters collectively rose up a level. A master can only decide a game in a small-scale battle, but a high-level elixir master can make a country's overall strength stronger. Therefore, Leeson was so courteous to Jason not only because Jason cured the eldest prince's disease, but also because Jason showed a knowledge of elixirs that even Master Rudolph, the kingdom's number one elixir master, was amazed by. Thinking about it, Jason had such a profound knowledge of elixirs at a young age. He must have been taught by a very powerful elixir master. Even if he didn't look at this, Jason's own strength was enough for him to try his best to win over him. If other children of the Todd family were assassinated, Nexent would only send people to make peace and would not pay much attention. However, Jason was assassinated, which made him extremely angry and sensitively captured in his heart. What? Humph, this Radigan family is so shameless. The Public Security Bureau is used to maintain the safety of the residents of the royal city. It's better for him to arrest them all, regardless of good or evil, and even avenge them. It's so shameless. Center was extremely angry. Your Majesty. A cold voice sounded outside the door. This person was none other than the seventh-level low-level emperor spiritualist D. Lin, the commander of the kingdom's palace guards, known as the kingdom's number one master. D. Lin, come in. Leeson said kindly. D. Lin is only 1.7 meters tall, which is relatively thin in the kingdom of Orlando. He has long brown hair, his eyes are as sharp as sharp blades, and he looks like a middle-aged man. Your Majesty, what's the matter? D. Lin stood there like a javelin, with a confidence that swept the world and said directly. Leeson was also very direct, according to intelligence, the riots in the royal city were caused by the conflict between the Todd family and the Radigan family. Dylan remained silent. You lead two people to stop the conflict between the Todd family and the Radigan family immediately, and then ask Leo and Batad to come to see me immediately. What if they resist? D. Lin asked Rode. Then you can capture them both for me. Leeson said coldly. Yes, your majesty. D. Lin retreated. The Radigan family is located in the southern part of the royal city, covering a huge area. As the residential area for the kingdom's important ministers, the status of those who can live in this area is either rich or noble. On the street in the distance, a group of people suddenly walked toward the Radigan family's mansion in a menacing manner. The leader was none other than Leo, the patriarch of the Todd family, and following him were a group of people who were urgently transferred from the family. The guards, as well as the large army of city guards armed with sharp swords, brought by Abel. Surround me up. Looking at the Radigan family mansion not far away, Leo waved his hand and ordered sternly. At this moment, the door to the Radigan family's mansion suddenly opened, and a group of people came out in a mighty manner. The leader was Bastard, the patriarch of the Radigan family. Bastard! Leo! The two parties stood still, looking at each other on the wide street, with anger on their faces. Leo, you, a member of the Todd family, killed my son Kelpid. I haven't settled the score with you yet, but you still have the guts to come here. Bastard looked at Leo in front of him coldly, with a hint of emotion in his tone. A hint of suppressed anger. Humph, Bastard, so what, your Radigan family colluded with assassins to assassinate my Todd family child. If the assassination failed, you took my Todd family child back to the police station and tortured him with the intention of murdering him. It's simply, you are lawless and lawless, so I will capture you here today and hand you over to His Majesty. Leo said it with awe-inspiring justice, without any hesitation. You fart, old man, you are spitting blood. Batad, who had lost his son, was furious, his beard and hair were flying, and his eyes were about to split. 
whether or not you are spewing blood, your majesty will know when the time comes. Batad, just surrender and capture him. If you resist, don't blame me for being ruthless. Leo sneered repeatedly. Bastard squinted his eyes and glanced across the crowd one by one, and sneered, whoever is merciless is still talking about it. Batad knew that there was an older generation in the Todd family, Rost, who had never come forward. He is a seventh-level imperial spiritual master, so Batad immediately looked at everyone in the crowd carefully. After seeing that except for Renault, Abel and a middle-aged man he didn't know, the other party's leader did not find Rost, and even several elders of the Todd family were not there, Batad felt completely relieved. In terms of strength, his side is definitely much stronger than the other side. The other side only has Leo, a senior spiritual master, and Abel, a senior spiritual master, can be ignored. The middle-aged man is probably not that strong either. As for those bodyguards and city guards, there were at most a few heavenly spirit masters, and they didn't create any waves at all. Looking at his own side, Bastard himself is a senior spiritual master. There is also an intermediate spiritual master and several senior sect spiritual masters in his family. In terms of strength, they are definitely far superior to each other. Thinking of this, Batad was filled with confidence. Leo, if you stay at home obediently, I'm afraid I can't do anything to you. I didn't expect you to rush over with such a large number of people. Too much. Don't take me seriously anymore. You are seeking death today, so don't blame me for being rude. Batad looked at Leo and others in front of him coldly, waved his right hand, and a large group of Lottie behind him the members of the Gen family immediately drew their weapons and surrounded him. Batad also mobilized the spiritual power in his body and walked forward slowly. The powerful spiritual power circulated rapidly throughout his body, arousing waves of surging spiritual power fluctuations in the air. Leo, they have been prepared for a long time, we should retreat first. Looking at Bastard and others approaching in a hurry, Abel's expression suddenly changed and he said. Withdraw? A contemptuous smile appeared on Leo's face, Abel, you are thinking of withdrawing before the battle. It really embarrasses our Todd family. Members of our Todd family never face the enemy. We all move forward bravely, there is absolutely no reason to be afraid of retreating. Abel suddenly felt unhappy, you are a senior spiritual master, of course you are not afraid. Even if you can't defeat me, no one can stop you if you want to leave. I'm just a senior sect spiritual master, might die here if he is not careful. But Abel did not dare to say this. There are so many family guards and city guards here. If he really says this, then no matter who is in the family in the future, he will die here. Even in front of his men, he couldn't even raise his head. Secretly paying attention to Batad and another middle-aged man from the Radigan family who had the strength of an intermediate spiritual master, Abel made up his mind that as soon as the battle started, he would blend directly into the crowd and let Leo deal with it. Both of them. Thinking of this, Abel glanced at Renault, who was standing aside. He saw Renault standing next to Leo with an indifferent expression, looking at Bastard and others approaching in front of him, with no expression on his face and no fear at all. Humph, just pretend to be cool. If a fight breaks out later, let's see where you can hide. Abel sneered in his heart, and stepped back a little without leaving a trace, with a sinister smile on his lips, Reno ah, Reno, you said that you are a useless person, and you came here to join in the fun. Aren't you going to the manhole with a lantern and looking for death? Only Jason and Rose are responsible for Renault's recovery of strength and promotion to the Imperial Spirit Master. Tay and Leo only knew about it, and there was no rumor. When Abel received the information, he only said that Kelfield had been killed by Jason. Abel thought it was Leo who arrived and rescued Jason. After coming out, Knucklefield was killed by an angry Jason. Leo, although you and I are both king ministers and sit in the headquarters, you and I have never really competed once. Today, I will let everyone in the country know who is the real king. The first person. 
The robe on Bastad's body automatically moved without wind under the instigation of spiritual elements in the air. He spoke boldly, a wild aura emerged from his body in vain, and his eyes shot out with rays of light. Ha ha, bastard, I will let you know who is the real number one among the kings. Leo also laughed heartily. For Kelfield, who has slowly developed the Radigan family from a first-class family into a top family over the years, and whose own strength has reached the level of a senior spiritual master, Renault has to say that he admires him very much. If possible, Renault I would love to be friends with him, but for two opposing families, this is simply impossible. Amid laughter, Leo stepped forward, and suddenly a hand fell on his shoulder, pulling his body. Huh? Second brother. Leo turned his head and looked at Renault with doubts. Brother. Renault said indifferently, his eyes calm without a trace of ripples, this matter happened because of Jason, let me solve it. You Leo was stunned for a moment and fell silent. Leo, who knew his second brother very well, could tell from Renault's eyes that Renault had already made up his mind on this matter. Ever since he was a child, Renault had a very stubborn temper. As long as it was something he decided, few people could change it. You all stand back. Renault waved his hand to everyone behind him and stepped out of the crowd. All the Todd family guards and city guards looked at each other, not knowing what to do. This incident started because of Jason, and Renault didn't want some innocent people to be injured or even die in the conflict. Everyone, step back. Leo ordered calmly. There was some commotion, and the guards and city guards who didn't know whether to step back immediately stepped back. What does Renault want to do? You don't want to seek death like this. Abel was full of doubts, and he felt something was wrong in his heart, but he didn't understand what the problem was. Leo, what do you mean? Bastard didn't even look at Renault who came out, his expression changed, and he asked Leo in a deep voice. It's no fun, I'm just going to kill you. Renault said coldly. You? Want my life? Ha ha, ha ha ha. Batad couldn't help laughing out loud, as if he had heard an extremely funny joke, with extremely disdain in his eyes, who do you think you are? Even if you want to kill me, go back and let Leo come out. Bastard's heart was filled with disdain. Who is he? The patriarch of the Radigan family, the first-class duke of the kingdom, the royal minister, and the deputy minister of the headquarters. He is a senior spiritual master with a high position of authority and terrifying strength, and has a distinguished reputation. Among the many people present, the only one with a higher status than him was Leo, the head of the headquarters. As for Renault, he just felt a little familiar, but couldn't remember where he had seen him before. Seeing him standing behind Leo, naturally thinks that he is an ordinary person with some status in the Todd family, but not very high. After all, he knew several elders of the Todd family and several extremely important figures. Facing Bastard's disdainful gaze and humiliating words, Renault's face remained as indifferent as ever, and he slowly moved forward. Since you want to die so much, then I will help you. Bastard was completely angry and said coldly, Robinho, teach him a lesson. Yes, patriarch. An extremely burly figure, a strong man walked out from the crowd behind Batad, carrying a heavy giant sword on his shoulder. The sight of that giant sword alone made people feel extremely heart-stopping. If it was smashed down, it would definitely kill a person. People were smashed into a pulp. This person is the other one of the only two sixth-level spiritual masters in the Radigan family, the intermediate spiritual master, Robinho. Boy. Come, let's do some activities with your uncle. Robinho grinned, with a ferocious smile on his face, and a ferocious light in his eyes. He looked at Renault as if he were looking at a dead man. Renault is only about 1.75 meters tall. 18 years of hard work has made him fall into the extremely thin category, while Robinho is a sturdy man, over 2 meters tall, with a shiny face. His face was full of flesh under his bald head and he trembled when he walked. The two stood opposite each other, just like an adult facing a child. 
Moreover, the adult was carrying a metal giant sword that was one foot wide and more than two meters long on his shoulders, but the child was using his bare hands. Patriarch, this the strong visual impact made everyone swallow involuntarily. A guard with a high status in the Todd family walked behind Leo worriedly and made a worried sound. Jason's reputation has completely spread in the Todd family. Many third-generation disciples have long regarded Jason, who defeated Kelly, as their idol. Many second-generation disciples, and even some family elders, saw Jason after His Royal Highness the Grand Prince and Master Rudolph of the Kingdom had such a good relationship with Jason, they also had a re-evaluation of Jason's status in the family. Jason's father, Reno, usually has no heirs in the family. He often chats with some family guards, which makes these family guards quite fond of him. Now seeing that Renault was actually facing the Radigan family's famous murderer, the intermediate spiritual master Robinho, alone, even though there were few people on his side, the leading guard couldn't help but remind Leo. As the second master of the Radigan family, Robinho, the god of killing, has a very wide reputation in the royal city. He is also very famous among the kings of Orlando. He has a military rank of partial general and is even better than some of those who sit on one side. The Legion commander is still widely known because of his bloody killing methods. Robinho seems to be born for killing. He has shown extremely high talent in martial arts since he was a child. After joining the army under the arrangement of Batad, Robinho has repeatedly made military exploits and strangled several soldiers in a row. A gang of thieves doing evil in the kingdom. Robinho was famous not for his strength but for the fact that he never took prisoners when he went on an expedition. All enemies who fell into his hands had only one fate, and that was death. What really made him the god of death was a small-scale war on the border of the kingdom. Although the situation in the northwest countries where the kingdom of Orlando is located has been quite stable in recent years, some border conflicts still occur from time to time. Because of the checks and balances between them, several countries also fight in small quantities, resulting in casualties. No matter how serious it is, the kingdom turns a blind eye and just trains its troops in actual combat. However, during a border conflict, because the neighboring army crossed the territory of the kingdom of Orlando, Robinho, who was stationed on the border at the time, immediately led his men to fight back. At that time, Robinho was already famous. He was a low-level spiritual master. Under his powerful strength, the neighboring armies were quickly defeated. After leaving behind a pile of corpses, they retreated in embarrassment. Normally, even if such a border confrontation is over, the rest should be a quarrel between the kingdom's ministry of foreign affairs. However, something happened that shocked everyone. Robinho did not stop the pursuit. He was so furious that he rushed across the border of neighboring countries alone, chasing the neighboring team for nearly a hundred miles and killing the opponent. All soldiers, including officers and officers, nearly 3,000 people were killed. This incident outraged the neighboring countries. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs strongly condemned it and used harsh words. The Kingdom of Orlando and its neighboring countries almost staged a full-scale national war. Robinho, the instigator of the incident, was sent back to the royal city by the furious Le Chenti, demoted from general to general, and allowed to reflect at home. And this incident also left Robinho with a famous name in the army, the god of death. Don't worry, it's okay. Faced with the worries of the guards, Leo shook his head. Knowing Renault's strength, he didn't have the slightest worry in his heart. Huh? Why hasn't Leo come forward yet? Are his family members allowed to be killed? Batad on the side frowned. The reason why he asked Robinho to come out was not really to let Leo come out. Robinho and Leno clashed just to force Leo out. Robinho is not an ordinary person. He is known as the god of killing. When he works hard, he doesn't care about your family or not. He will kill them all with one sword. When Batad thought about it, Leo would definitely be worried that Robinho would go crazy and kill indiscriminately, and then come out to challenge himself, 
but now Leo's performance far exceeded Bastad's expectations. Haha, <laughs> boy, you are so thin and weak. I wonder if you can take your uncle's sword. Robinho, in the field, didn't care what the people on both sides thought. He was extremely excited as long as there was a fight. When he came to Renault, he suddenly raised the giant sword in his hand and struck Renault in the head. Buzz Robinho grinned. The kinetic energy generated by the high-speed movement of the giant sword made the surrounding air tremble. However, he has not yet used all his strength, and even the spiritual power on the giant sword has not been loaded much. In his opinion, the thin and weak-looking guy in front of him can be defeated instantly with just one casual blow. It doesn't take any effort. The moment the giant sword fell, Robinho could already imagine that the opponent turned into a pile of minced meat under his giant sword. The blood splashing out from the vagina, how tempting it is. Robinho couldn't help but licked his tongue, with a beast-like ferocity in his eyes. All the guards of the Todd family and the city guards were all excited at this moment. At this moment, get out. A thunderous shout suddenly exploded in the field, causing everyone in the room to have their eardrums ringing. Bang! Before anyone even had time to see anything, they heard a loud noise in the field, and Robinho, who was originally so fierce and like a god descending from heaven, was already flying high. But Renault, who was standing there quietly, was still standing there, as if he hadn't even moved at all before. Boom! Robinho struggled to control his body in the air and landed heavily on the field. The rocks under his feet cracked under his feet. What the hell, such a thought suddenly appeared in the minds of everyone in the audience. Before they could recover from the shock, they heard dense clicking sounds in the field, Robinho's body, the stainless steel armor, centered on the chest, cracks quickly appeared, and then, with a wow, the entire armor instantly turned into countless fragments and fell to the ground. A trace of blood slipped quietly from the corner of Robinho's mouth. This what is going on? Everyone on the field was shocked. Robinho was the god of death in the kingdom. He was at the peak of his strength, but he was instantly repulsed. His armor was shattered and his body was injured. The people present did not even see clearly how Renault took action. Impossible, impossible Abel's eyes widened, didn't this Renault's strength be abolished eighteen years ago? How could it be so strong? Among all the people on the field, only a senior spiritual masters, Leo and Bastard, saw Renault's movements clearly. The moment the giant sword in Robinho's hand fell, Renault just raised his left hand to block, and then slapped Robinho with his right hand. On top of O's chest. Who is this person? When did the Todd family produce such a master? Batad clenched his fists, his heart was chilling, and his body couldn't help but tremble slightly. As two opposing families, Batad knew the masters of the Todd family very clearly. The Radigan family had risen rapidly in recent years and competed with the Todd family for the title of the martial arts family of the Kingdom of Orlando. Two Spiritual Masters Although the Todd family is a veteran martial arts family in the kingdom, apart from Rost, the imperial spiritual master, there are only three spiritual masters in the entire family, including Leo, and the other two are low-level spiritual masters. Batad knew the two low-level spiritual masters. One was the elder of the Todd family, and the other was the commander of the army outside the Todd family. When everyone was shocked and confused roar. An angry roar roared from Robinho's mouth. You actually hurt me, oh, you actually hurt me. A stream of fiery red spiritual power suddenly rose from Robinho's body and the scorching air waves rolled in the center of the entire field, burning the air. Got a twist. Robinho's eyes turned extremely red at this moment, the giant sword in his hand was raised high, his angry face was distorted, and his whole body suddenly jumped up, like a fire phoenix rising into the sky. Red flame cut. Robinho's angry voice sounded in mid-air, and the flames on the giant sword in his hand suddenly surged turning into a fire dragon several feet long, aiming at Renault and slashing with all his strength. The previous blow was just Robinho's carelessness, but now, 
The injured Robinho was angry and had shown his strongest strength. Kill. Robinho's rumbling voice made the whole world turn red, with flames rising to the sky. Seeking death. Renault was standing there quietly. Misty golden lights suddenly appeared on his body. Golden air waves surrounded Renault. In the golden light, Renault's whole body condensed into a golden giant sword and rose into the sky. Boom. The golden sword rainbow formed by Renault instantly hit the flaming giant sword that Robinho slashed down. With a loud noise, the bones of Robinho's arm were directly shocked and broke. Kai Lai, the flaming giant sword in his hand, could no longer be held and flew into the air. No impossible, there was a trace of inexplicable horror in the eyes of Robinho, who was originally extremely crazy, but the golden sword rainbow only turned slightly and shot directly through his chest. Pung. Robinho's body fell from the air and he knelt heavily on the ground. On his chest, a huge blood hole spat out blood crazily, dyeing the bluestone tiles on the street blood red. You are very strong, I died unjustly. Robinho said a few words intermittently, his eyes dimmed instantly, and his body fell forward to the ground. Boom. The giant sword that was thrown into the sky hit the ground heavily at this time, and one end was deeply inserted into the rocks, paving the street. The originally straight metal giant sword now turned into a crooked one. Of Iron Ruler. Oh my god. So strong. The expressions of everyone around him changed drastically, and they were extremely shocked. With just one move, he instantly killed Robinho, the intermediate spiritual master known as the god of killing in the kingdom. You must know that Robinho is an intermediate spiritual master, the most top figure in the entire kingdom, and the number one master in some principalities. However, in front of the middle-aged man on the field, Robinho's weapon, which had displayed all his strength, was suddenly knocked away, and then he was killed instantly, extremely domineering. Emperor Emperor Spirit Master, seeing Renault floating in the air without falling, some people in the crowd made a sound in surprise. Yes, he didn't fall. The rest of the people suddenly woke up. Just like Robinho's previous use of Red Flame Slash, the spiritual master can also stay in the air for a period of time, but that is only temporary, and now Renault is here after killing Robinho, he has been floating not far away in front of everyone, never falling. Only a 7th level Imperial Spirit Master can do this. Oh my god, he is actually an Imperial Spiritualist. When did our family have another Imperial Spiritualist? No wonder Chief Leo asked him to take action. The guards and city guards of the Todd family were shocked. At the same time, this it suddenly dawned on me. No wonder, no wonder only the Imperial Spiritual Master can kill Robinho the intermediate spiritual master, in an instant. Otherwise, this is something that even the Leo clan leader cannot do. This Renault Abel's eyes were so wide that he could not help but feel a trace of fear in his heart. When he thought of what he had done to Renault before, Abel's heart couldn't help but tremble. Now it's your turn. After Renault killed Robinho, his cold eyes instantly fell on Bastard's face, with murderous intent in his eyes. No imperial spirit master, it's impossible Batad had an expression of disbelief on his face, and his heart was trembling. In stern continent, spiritual masters of levels 1 to 3 are called low-level professionals, spiritual masters of levels 4 to 6 are called mid-level professionals, and those above level 7 are truly high-level professionals. It seems to be only one level away from the 7th level, but the difference in strength between the two is huge. Once a spiritual master reaches the seventh level, he can fly in the air. This alone can make him invincible when facing low-level professionals. The reason why the seventh-level imperial spiritual master can fly in the air, especially because its own spiritual power can be harmoniously combined with the spiritual power in the air to provide a steady stream of assistance. Spiritual masters of the sixth level and below rely on the spiritual power stored in their bodies to fight. Once the spiritual power in their bodies is exhausted, they will basically lose their fighting power. 
However, the emperor spiritual masters of the seventh level will it can communicate the spiritual power between heaven and earth. When spiritual power is needed, it can be continuously extracted from the air without worrying about the spiritual power being exhausted. All in all, despite the fact that there seems to be only one level difference between the spiritual master and the imperial spiritual master, if they really want to take action, with the development of spiritual masters in this era, Batad has absolutely no chance of winning. Let's go bastard only had time to have an idea in his mind, turned around and left, how could he dare to provoke Renault again? Judging from Renault's previous hesitation in killing Robinho and the way he looked at him, Batad believed that the middle-aged man would never show mercy because of his identity. Want to escape? Renault narrowed his eyes slightly, and the golden spiritual power in his body vibrated, and suddenly turned into a golden lightning, shooting towards Bastard at high speed. In terms of speed, how could Batad, who was a sixth-level senior spiritual master, compare to Renault, who was flying in the air? He's here, Bastad's expression changed drastically. A bright golden sword rainbow shot directly over, and Bastard gritted his teeth when he saw that he could not escape. Buzz buzz a series of spiritual rings floated above Bastad's head, and the surging earth-yellow spiritual power quickly condensed in front of Bastard's body, forming dozens of stone rocks that looked like a forest of spears. Spear, shot at Renault in midair. At the same time, a layer of tight earth element armor quietly emerged on Bastard's body. Humph. Renault snorted coldly and broke into the forest of guns. Dozens of tiny golden sword waves burst out from the hazy golden light on his body, easily blasting away the stone spears made of earth elements. It shattered, but because the golden sword wave was too small, it collapsed after destroying the stone spear. Death. A huge golden sword appeared above Renault's head. With a furious voice, it slashed down at Batad. Powerful energy shot out in all directions, making even the surrounding air tremble. Clan leader. Be careful. The faces of the Radigan family members changed colors, and they were very worried. But the strength of those family members is too weak. They can't even compare to Robinho, let alone challenge Renault. They are destined to die. Open it for me. Batad roared, holding his hands up high and streaks of earthy yellow light lingered between his hands, quickly forming an earth element shield that continued to condense and thicken. Boom! The phantom of the golden giant sword struck heavily on the earth element shield. With a click sound, the earth element shield quickly cracked and disintegrated, turning into spiritual elements again and dissipating in the air. The impact, caused by the golden giant sword's phantom slash, after breaking through the earth element shield, directly turned into an invisible ripple and sank into Bastard's body below. Pung. Bastard's body shook, and a mouthful of blood spurted out. Spiderweb-like cracks appeared on the earth element armor, covering his body, and his feet sank into the street up to his knees, shaking the rocks below into powder. I didn't expect you to be able to withstand this blow of mine, but you won't be so lucky with the next blow. Renault raised his eyebrows and looked coldly at Batad below, saying indifferently. Batad, who cultivates the earth element spiritual power, is strongest in defense. Although the metal element has always been known for its strongest attacks, Renault has not been promoted to the imperial spiritual master for a long time, and he does not have the weapons in his hands, so he cannot defeat Bastard. Tad killed him with one move. Boom. Renault didn't waste any words. The second shadow of the golden giant sword condensed above his head and slashed down again. You can't block it forcefully, but you can't help it if you don't block it forcefully. It's too fast and there's no time to dodge, Batad felt bitter in his heart and felt extremely aggrieved. But there was nothing he could do. In a hurry, he could only hold on and raise his hands again to condense the spiritual power of the earth element. However, his arms were already weak, and he had been injured in the previous block. Pung. Bastad's face flushed, and he spurted out a mouthful of blood again. His arms exploded under this blow, and there were bursts of creaking sounds from the whole body skeleton. His body was shaking violently, and his internal organs were shaken. 
that cracked open. The huge impact caused Bastad's entire body to sink into the ground. But he was not dead yet, and he withstood Renault's second attack. This bastard is really tough. Renault frowned with some dissatisfaction, but he must die today. Not only because Batad is from the Radigan family and has always been against the family, more importantly, Jason killed Kelpid. Only by killing Bastard can Renault feel relieved. This is also the reason why Renault stopped Leo before and stepped forward to take action himself. Die. In the roar, Renault once again condensed the golden giant sword and slashed it down without hesitation. At this moment, suddenly, stop an extremely loud explosion rumbled from far to near, and a fiery red figure cut through the sky like a shooting star and came straight towards him. However, Renault did not pause at all. The giant sword, condensed with golden spiritual power, fell heavily on the head of Bastard, who had lost his arms, and directly chopped Batad into a pulp. The huge energy impact was transmitted and a huge pit about several feet in diameter and several meters deep suddenly appeared on the street paved with bluestone bricks. Chief. All the members of the Radigan family screamed with fear and grief on their faces. Didn't you hear I told you to stop? The fiery red figure who had roared in the distance instantly fell on the edge of the giant pit. He looked at Batad, whose appearance was already unclear in the center of the pit, and raised his head. His sharp gaze fell on Renault's face. The person coming is none other than D. Lin, the seventh-level low-level imperial spiritual master known as the number one master in the kingdom of Orlando. Previously, under the order of His Majesty Lee Sint, D. Lin led two men to rush here from the palace. When he was halfway there, he felt powerful energy fluctuations coming from the door of the Radigan family mansion. He was worried that something was wrong. D. Lin dropped his two men and flew over first. D. Lin, who was flying through the air, saw Renault about to kill Batad in the distance, and immediately stopped him. However, he did not expect that the other party did not bother him at all, and struck Bastard with a sword without hesitation. Killed on the spot. D. Lin. Leo couldn't help but frown when he saw the person coming. Lord Dylan. The members of the Radigan family suddenly seemed to have found their backbone and cried sadly, Lord Dylan, you have to make the decision for our clan leader. It was him, the murderer, who killed our clan leader. Lord D. Lin, you must catch this murderer and hand him over to his majesty. Want me to stop? Renault snorted coldly in midair, no one can stop the person I want to kill. After that, Renault, who was flying in the air, didn't even look at D. Lin, turned around and landed next to Leo. After killing the two strongest people in the Radigan family, the rest were just minions, so Renault was no longer interested. As for the imperial spiritual master, who came later, Renault also recognized him as D. Lin, known as the number one master in the kingdom of Orlando. But it doesn't matter if he is the number one master. As long as he dares to mind his own business, Renault doesn't mind competing with the opponent and pulling him down from the throne of the kingdom's number one master in full view of the public. Renault and Dylan looked at each other, from a distance, tense with each other. For a moment, the atmosphere on the entire street was so oppressive that it was suffocating. Okay, very good. D. Lin said coldly, his eyes suddenly turned cold, then take a move from me. Whoops. After the words fell, D. Lin's whole body turned into a fiery red afterimage, and he came to Renault in an instant. In front of him, he aimed at Renault and punched him directly. Boom. With one punch, Renault felt that the world was darkened. D. Lin, you Leo, who was standing next to Renault, turned pale with shock. The strong elemental impact made him hastily say three words, and then he involuntarily stepped back. The punch struck by D. Lin was extremely simple. It was a direct punch. There were no fancy moves, and it was not as shocking as when Robinho used the red flame slash. However, it made Renault feel a warning sign in his heart. Renault's right hand immediately transformed into a giant golden palm and connected with the punch. Bang! Renault's whole body was blown away, and he hit a wall next to the street hard. 
The wall exploded, and then Renault's figure stopped, looking a little embarrassed. Waves of extremely hot fire spiritual power continuously hit the meridians of Renault's right hand. Renault mobilized the golden spiritual power in his body with all his strength, and then suppressed it. This d Lin Renault was a little angry in his heart. The opponent's sudden attack left him with no time to react, and d Lin practiced fire-based skills. In terms of attributes, fire was the best at defeating gold. What's more, d Lin had been an imperial spiritual master for a long time, and Renault had just been promoted. This let Renault suffer some hidden losses before. This is a warning to you. D. Lin stood in the middle of the street, withdrew his right fist and said coldly. This D. Lin Leo shook his head secretly and breathed a sigh of relief in his heart. He originally thought that D. Lin, who suddenly took action, was going to fight to the death with Renault, but it turned out that he was just taking a breath because of the previous incident. Give me a warning? Haha. <laughs> Renault couldn't help laughing loudly, but his eyes were as cold as a knife. I don't need this thing, so I'd better give it back to you. Brush. Renault immediately kicked his foot. The ground turned into a golden stream of light. Buzz buzz buzz, five spiritual rings emerged from the head of Renault's head, suspended behind his head, trembling constantly. Countless golden streams of light condensed into a golden sword rainbow in front of Renault. Humph. Renault's eyes flashed sharply. Boom. The golden sword rainbow shot straight over, causing D. Lin's expression to change. He roared and at the same time swung his right fist that enveloped the fiery red air flow. He waved his right fist as if pushing a mountain. It seemed slow, but actually blocked Renault's golden sword rainbow, and only heard a deafening roar. D. Lin retreated more than ten meters, then gritted his teeth and stared at Renault. Although his right fist finally blocked Renault's previous blow, the sharp sword energy made his entire right fist extremely numb. Fire is the most crazy, fierce, and extremely violent, while metal is the most rigid, strong, and extremely sharp. Among the five elements, in terms of attack power, it is definitely the metal element. Although in terms of realm, Renault, who had just been promoted to the Imperial Spiritual Master, was not as advanced as God Lin, but as the first genius of the Todd family, the kingdom's first martial arts family, Renault had five spiritual rings, and the gold system skills he practiced were also the best in the kingdom. Before D. Lin became famous and was recruited by the kingdom, he was just an ordinary spiritual master in a remote town in the kingdom of Orlando. Even if he had cultivated to the level of an imperial spiritual master, in terms of hardware foundation, he was far inferior to Renault, who came from a big family. You Renault and Dylan stood at both ends of the street, glaring at each other angrily. Kill, kill him. Many members of the Radigan family saw this situation and prayed angrily in their hearts, hoping that D. Lin could kill Renault. D. Lin, this Leo's expression changed, and he hurriedly stepped forward to say. Before he could finish his words, he heard, ha ha. Ha ha ha. Both Renault and D. Lin, who were originally glaring at each other, were shocked. He burst out laughing. What's going on? Everyone around him was stunned and confused. The two people who were fighting each other before were now laughing like two good friends. You're good. Renault said. You are also very strong. D. Lin's tone was still so cold, but there was a slight smile in his eyes that were always like blades. The sympathy between these two masters. In the eyes of people at their level, only masters of the same level can win their respect. For them, power and money are all outside themselves. They all have their own dreams, but the same thing is that only the end of martial arts is the limit they want to pursue. Leo, His Majesty already knows about the conflict between you and the Radigan family. Now His Majesty orders you to stop all actions and go to the palace immediately without delay. D. Lin said coldly. Lord Dylan, a member of the Radigan family on the side immediately came out and said anxiously, This guy killed the Batad patriarch, Lord Dylan, shut up. Dylan interrupted directly. Hearing what the man said, 
Your Majesty has also ordered your Radigan family to stop all actions, and all soldiers and security forces to return to their original positions. Chief Batad is no longer here. Your Radigan family should quickly elect a representative to follow me. Go back to the palace, as for the death of Patriarch Bastard, you go to His Majesty yourself and tell him that it has nothing to do with me. The remaining members of the Radigan family looked at each other for a few times and sighed, their eyes full of sorrow. Finally, an old man walked out of the crowd and said, Sir D. Lin, let me and you go to meet His Majesty. Let's go. D. Lin didn't waste any time and took the lead in walking at the front. Just when Renault was killing everyone in front of the Radigan family mansion, the Todd family was immediately in chaos. In the family meeting room, the elders who had received the news had already sat down in their respective seats, and Rost, who had always been indifferent to worldly affairs, was now sitting at the top of the list. This Leo is really outrageous. He mobilized the Mad Lions and city guards without any consultation from the family council. Does he know what this means? Claude stood there, patting him heavily. The conference room table roared. Humph, there are rules in the family. In case of emergency, the patriarch has full authority to handle all rights. Claude, what are you yelling about? Fifth Elder Carol rolled his eyes and said. In the family, he has always been with Leo. Make good friends. The patriarch has full authority to handle the situation, but look at what he did. That boy Jason actually killed Kelfield. Such a guy will cause trouble for our family, and Leo still let him. Third Elder Karen was also full of anger, if His Majesty gets angry by mobilizing the Mad Lion Army, it will be a serious crime of beheading. Even if Jason is on good terms with the eldest prince, His Majesty will not forgive him easily. This is not a general. Is our family being pushed into a pit of fire? I really don't know how Leo became the leader of the clan. That's enough, what time of the day is it now? If you are still arguing, please think about what to do. Look. At this time, Claude and the others were still arguing like this, and Rost couldn't help but burst into anger. Immediately, he seemed to have thought of something and asked aloud, By the way, where are the Jasons? Everyone in the conference room looked at me and I looked at you, and they all said in confusion, I don't know, 